and the champion chip chapter 36 entitled bad news two days later much to everyone's surprise lumpkin was released from the birdcage his recess detention was over high atop the jungle gym underneath the basketball hoop from the free throw line to the handball wall all fifth grade eyes focused on the large lone figure shuffling into the yard there was no way to know what lumpkin would try next but given his recent behavior everyone assumed it would be weird after all he had fused a frozen potato chip to his lip that was weird he had given fronties to third graders that was weird he had eaten 23 brussels sprouts that may not have been weird but it was certainly disgusting and he had made himself a hot fudge sundae. That was very weird. As Lumpkin approached, students backed away. They all knew the law of the jungle, Jim. The savage beast is far more deadly when wounded. Lily Matisse, Leon NPW, monitored Lumpkin from behind the giant maple. Something's different, said Lily Matisse. He looks smaller, tiny almost. Tiny is not a word I think of when I think of Lumpkin, said P.W. Must be that he's not wearing an army jacket, said Leon. Probably in the wash, P.W. suggested. Hot fudge must be tough to get out. Remind me to bring some poopy gone to school, said Leon. The joking stopped abruptly when Lumpkin's target became clear. He's heading over, said Lily Matisse. Quick, cried P.W., grab Lumpy. I can't, said Leon. He's in my locker. Why'd you leave him there? Lily Matisse said anxiously. How was I supposed to know Lumpkin would get released after the shh? Lily Matisse hissed. Here he comes. It was clear from the glower and the clenched fists that Lumpkin wanted to make up for lost time. P.W. bravely stepped forward and faced the bully head on. So what's it going to be today? He said fearlessly. A noogie? A purple nurple? A blood bracelet? No, I know. You're going to test out your patented howlitzer. Nah, said Lumpkin, cracking his knuckles. Got to be on my best behavior, at least for a while. He glanced up at the principal's office. Just thought you guys would want to know, seeing how you're all charter members of the Franklin Sparks fan club. Lumpkin smiled maliciously. Know what? Leon demanded. That your favorite teacher is toast, Lumpkin revealed. What are you talking about? said Lily Matisse. Let's just say I'm not the only one who's been birdcaged. Take a look for yourselves. Lumpkin pointed toward the principal's office. Sure enough, Mr. Sparks was standing in the window, his back to the playground. Lumpkin snickered. Bird Whistle wasn't too happy when she found out I got a fat lip in science class. But you did that to yourself, Lily Matisse said angrily. Maybe, Lumpkin admitted. But when Bird Whistle kicked me out to grill Sparks, I heard her say, It's goodbye, Chips, mister. She said it twice, and she said it mean. Leon had heard enough. Come on, he said. Joined by Lily Matisse and P.W., he hightailed it out of the playground and up the stairs. When they got close enough to view Mr. Sparks and the principal through a large plate glass window, they ducked down and took turns peeking in. Boy, they're really going at it, said P.W. Can you hear what they're saying? asked Lily Matisse. P.W. shook his head. The darn glass is too thick. Can either of you make out what's on that piece of paper? Bird Whistle is waving at Sparks. Leon inched up to get a better look. Well, whatever it is, it's not good. The big fat confidential stamp at the top always, always means trouble. We'll just have to swipe it. P.W. said. Are you crazy? exclaimed Lily Matisse. We can't just walk in there and take it. We don't have to walk in there, said P.W. Lily Matisse made a face. What are you talking about? He's talking about using Lumpy, Leon said as he rose to his feet. The three fifth graders rushed back to Leon's locker, retrieved Lumpy, and dashed out to the playground where Lumpkin had reclaimed his favorite spot at the top of the jungle gym. Leon took up his position behind the maple and used Lumpy to lower Lumpkin from his perch. By the time he had guided the bully into the building and up the stairs, 
The bird cage was empty? How should we do this? P.W. asked. One of you has to be lookout, said Leon. The other has to be the reader. I'll be way too busy with Lumpy to handle anything else. P.W. posted himself at the end of the hall. Once he gave the all-clear signal, Leon sent Lumpkin into the birdcage. Which sheet should I get him to grab? Leon asked Lily Matisse. She scanned the interior of the principal's office. I can't tell, she said. I've got to get a closer look. As she moved toward the plate glass window, she accidentally hit Leon's arm and triggered a chain reaction. Leon jerked Lumpy, Lumpy jerked Lumpkin, and a large stack of files toppled off the principal's desk. Leon panicked as he struggled to get Lumpkin to retrieve the scattered papers. Hold it, said Lily Matisse. Make him lift up the sheets one at a time before he puts them back. Leon worked Lumpy's arms. The effect was instantaneous. Lumpkin, entranced by the power of his spitting image, pressed a document against the plate glass window. Nope, that's not it, said Lily Matisse. That's a memo about sword safety during the medieval carnival. Next. Nope. This one's a requisition for mops. Next, next, nope, ixnay, next. Leon and Lumpy and Lumpkin repeated the robotic pickup procedure nearly a dozen times before Lily Matisse hit pay dirt. Bingo, she exclaimed. Out of the corner of his eye, Leon could see the red, excuse me, the blood red confidential stamp. What's it say, he demanded. Oh my gosh said Lily Matisse. Listen to this. She read the key passage out loud. Nimble fingers make nimble minds, Mr. Sparks, but not when those fingers are forever handling potato chips. I'm sorry to report that the complaints have only intensified since your parents' night presentation. Certain members of the classical school community believe you have been feeding the fifth graders the mental equivalent of junk food and frankly, I am hard-pressed to dispute that charge. Unless I can offer our parents concrete proof that your unconventional methods benefit our children educationally, I will have no choice but to release you from your duties following the science fair at the end of the year.